Hello my fellow board gamers, I am Taylor with Maple Madness Review, where I give you open and honest reviews about board games to see if they're good enough to be on your table. Today we're talking about Guillotine. Guillotine is a card game for 2-6 to six players and takes about half an hour to play. The point of the game is to win, and you win by getting ahead. So let's open up the box and see what's inside Guillotine. All right, so here we have Guillotine. First off, we have an actual Guillotine. This is actually kind of cool. Pops out, you hook it together. Boom, right there. That's kind of nice. Next, this is a card game, so we have a bunch of cards. Now, these are action cards. Each player is given five of these cards at the beginning of the game, and each and each card has a different power. Next, we have noble cards. Now, this is how you actually get the points. You see, these guys are going to be lined up nice in a row in front of that guillotine. And at the end of each person's turn, you're going to be collecting their head. See? The point of the game is by getting ahead. Funny, huh? Now... Each noble card has a point value in the bottom right-hand corner, and each noble has a coloring around it. Purple is for royal, green is for economic, red is for military, blue is for religion, and gray means that they're innocent victims, they give you negative points. Now, some nobles have certain powers or different abilities that they have. This is not true for all nobles, but some of them do have this, so draw an additional action card at the end of your turn after you collect this noble. So that one has a nice little perk. And there is a bunch of these cards. As far as components go, the cards, pretty good card stock. We have the rule book, or the rule book. Now this rule book is really minimal. Okay, it's just a little pamphlet. It has pretty good illustrations, surprising, for such a small rule book, and it's very easy to follow, and it is super, super simple, which is great. So that's all you get with Guillotine, now let's figure out how to play. So this is what the game looks like when it's all set up. You have the Guillotine on one side, followed by 12 nobles. To start the game, each player gets 5 action cards. And the game lasts three rounds. So when all of the nobles in line have their heads chopped off, you dump out 12 new nobles, and that is round two. Now, on your turn, it is very simple. You can choose to play an action card. Note, you do not have to, but you can. And uh, I'm going to play this action card. It allows me to trip one noble so that they move backwards exactly one place in line. And I'm going to trip the palace guard. Now the general is going to move to the front of the line because I tripped the palace guard and the general is worth four points and I want that four points. Now the second part of this card is that I get to play an additional card. So I'm going to play military support. Now, this is, put your card in front of you. This is worth plus one point for each red noble in your score pile. And, I'm going to collect the general. And the general's ability is, add another noble from the noble deck to the end of the line after you collect this noble. So, we take the red noble. It's this guy. And he goes at the end. And that's my turn. At the end of that... I get a new card. Now, you can collect a card every single time. Even if you don't play an action card, you still draw an action card. And there is no hand limit. So you can have 20 of these things at one time, and it's perfectly fine. Next, they can choose to play a card. They collect a noble. They collect an action card. And this continues until there's no nobles left. And uh, you do that two more times. At the end of three rounds, you count up. All your points, whoever has the most points, wins. Alright, so what is good and what is bad about guillotine? Well, let's go down my meeples. The first meeple, art. Now, the art in this game is pretty good. It is slightly cheesy, but since it's trying to take such a hard topic and turn it into a lighthearted game, that's kind of welcome. I mean, after all, 
you're killing people and you're collecting their heads. That sounds kind of grim. So the artwork is really nice at livening it up. So as far as the arc meeple goes, I'm awarding guillotine the whole meeple. Let's talk about components. Now the components of this game are actually pretty good. The cards are made of a good cardstock, and the paper guillotine is actually not a bad component. Now I have played this copy of guillotine for years, and it has been played almost weekly since it's a good filler game. And with that, the wear on the cards is very minimal, and the components have held up very well. As well as the rule book is very easy to understand, quick to read, and it is super easy to grasp this game. So as far as the component meeple goes, I'm awarding guillotine the whole meeple. Now let's talk about gameplay, the big thing. The part that is worth two whole meeples. Is the gameplay any good? Well, the gameplay is simplistic. You play a card, you collect a card, you draw a card. That is one step up from roll the dice and move the piece. Now there is a little bit of strategy to this game, but that strategy is entirely dependent on the cards that you just happen to draw. So as far as the gameplay goes, it's kind of weak, but since it's styled as a filler game, something that you just play in the meantime, and it's supposed to be lighthearted, it's not bad. But since on the age play on the box it says 12 and up, you'd expect that there would be more strategy to it than just play a card, draw a card, draw a card. So as far as gameplay goes, I'm awarding guillotine one meeple. Everything else, the price, the replayability, the it factor. Let's talk about price. The price is actually on its side. If you go to your local board game store, you can find guillotine for 18 to 20 US dollars, which is a pretty good deal for a card game. And that's right around what you would expect. Replayability. Now the replayability is kind of lacking. Although there is enough cards in there for the action cards and the noble deck that you don't go through all of them every single game. But there's not a huge selection of cards. So after you play it twice, things really start to get familiar and you can start counting what kind of cards are in the deck and everything like that. So the replayability is pretty decent, but it is not fantastic. Now the it factor, the oomph, is it going to hold its own on your game shelf? Well, kind of. It's a good middle-of-the-road filler game. And because of that, you pull it out every now and then just to kill time. However, it is not a fantastic filler game. It is not a game that people long to play. And this is not a game that will rank up in the top five favorite of people's games. It's an okay game, and because of that, it has an okay spark. The only thing that really has going for it is when you introduce it to new players, the theme of it really catches their imagination. Since you are collecting nobles' heads that are being chopped off. And that's something they had not seen before. This is the only time I've seen it. So as far as the price, replayability, and everything else, I'm awarding Guillotine one half of a meeple. So overall, how does Guillotine do? Guillotine gets a total of three and a half out of five meeples. Overall, it's not bad. And it's a pretty decent filler game, but it's not great. And it is lacking as far as gameplay goes. It is very simplistic. The only reason why it's age 12 and up is because you have a couple of cards in there that are a little risque, including one noble card called the Piss Boy. However, I have played this with kids that are nine years old and up. They really grasp it, they like it, and they think that the Piss Boy is freaking funny. If you like this review, go ahead and subscribe. There are great reviews like this coming out each week where I give you an open and honest review to see if the games are good enough to be on your table, to be played by your family and your game group. Make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this game, as well as what your suggestions are for a good filler game. And until next time, I'll see you at the game table.